Hello and welcome! I'm Lou and this is Lou's Reviews. So there's a rumor going around about a comic book writer, and his name is Jim Lee. And this guy got to see an early screening of the new Superman movie called Man of Steel. And from what I hear, he cried a few times. I was like, really? Wow! A Superman movie made a Superman writer cry? That's an interesting rumor. And then I got to see Man of Steel. And it's safe to say that for me, this is the Superman movie that I've been waiting for. This is it. This is the one, guys. And let me tell you why. The number one thing that they got right here was they focused more on the man and less on the steel or the super. They humanized Superman. They made him human. It's that element of humanity that allows audience members to connect with Superman, even though he's an alien from another planet. The beginning of the movie starts off in Krypton, and we spent a good portion of time on this planet. Like It felt like 30 minutes. Not that it takes away anything from the film, but instead it allows you to really connect with Clark's biological parents. And this connection has to do with the fact that Jor-El and Kara-El were able to accomplish something no Kryptonian has been able to do for thousands of years. What is this accomplishment I'm talking about? <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find out in the first five minutes of the movie. When we're done with Krypton and when it's all blown up and shit, we catch up with a 33-year-old Clark Kent. He's traveling the world, he's picking up jobs here and there, and saving people along the way. Juxtaposed with flashbacks of his past. And these are significant moments of his life. With his human parents, Martha Kent and Jonathan Kent, that helped build his character. Considering that this isn't Smallville where we had 10 seasons or 10 years, to explain how Clark Kent became who he is. Man of Steel picks out the right amount of flashbacks just to explain who Clark Kent is and where he comes from. Now, what I thought was a really nice touch to when he first puts on the cape was that he doesn't exactly start off awesome. He's still learning. He doesn't exactly fly right away. He tries to leap tall buildings in a single bound. But in this case, he tries to leap over snowy mountains. <laughs> oh, 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 shit! The point is, he's inexperienced. He's just getting to feel the ropes right now. Even though there's no green kryptonite in this movie, Clark has some noticeable weaknesses, which Fiora points out. And I think she's like General Zod's second in command, first lieutenant or something. And this chick kind of stands out a little more than General Zod. Her on-screen presence is intimidating and dangerous, and she's kind of hot. Compared to General Zod, who's very power-driven, but also tortured at the same time. And Michael Shannon gives a very solid performance as the villain. The General Zod is super hell-bent on creating Krypton again. So it's up to Clark Kent and his newly discovered sense of self to save the world. And once you get all the lessons and morals and character development out of the way, BAM! This movie gets going! And I was like, YES! Superman gets to punch someone! FINALLY! BOOM! BAM! He's, 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 he's still punching people. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of punching in this movie. It kind of reminds me of the 2007 Transformers movie. The first hour was like story building. It's like, okay, this kind of feels like a Steven Spielberg kind of movie. Once the story's out of the way, bam, we get to start blowing shit up. Michael Bay style. For Man of Steel, Zack Snyder style. And I could rant about the many things wrong with this movie. Like how many people actually died without the movie actually acknowledging it. Because a lot of shit blows up in this movie. Half of it was done by Superman. Though the one thing I really like about Christopher Nolan and David S. Goyer when they combine their minds is that they always try to find a reason for everything. Why, 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 why? They give a legitimate reason for his suit that it's actually a Kryptonian suit and that everyone in Krypton has their own symbol and it represents their house. But what I thought they did a really good job with was the relationship between Clark and Lois. What they did here in Man of Steel just made so much sense. It was pretty logical and it will play out really well in the sequels to come, which I am looking forward to and the new Justice League movie that they're planning to do as well. And to wrap things up, I'm kind of going about this the same way what I did with This Is The End last week. If I had the Great Man of Steel, I would give it like a 4.3, 4.4. I bumped This Is The End up a couple of points because it was super funny. For Man of Steel, I'm bumping it up a couple of points as well. One, it's a Superman movie that I've been waiting for. Two, they humanized him perfectly. And three, like Jim Lee, I, I cried a few times. Seriously, I cried a few times. The official Hats Off score for Man of Steel, 4.6. If you like what you see here at hatsauce.com, look down below, like, and subscribe, and you're good to go. Or the freaking name of the title. This is a zombie apocalypse movie on an epic scale. However, despite its superstar lead who also produced it and the high production value, by the end of it, there are plenty of other better zombie movies out there.